Hello everyone and welcome back to web series episode 6. You guys do know why I call it web series, right? Because it's like, you know, like like web, like spider web, web series, like online, it's funny. Oh my god, who's calling me while I'm trying to record? Hello, who is this? Hello, this is David from Harvard University. We heard why you called it web series. Bro, you're in! Yeah! <laughs> On today's show, we're going to be reviewing three more Spider-Man games. The first being Spider-Man 2, The Sinister Six, then Spider-Man, Enter Electro, and finally, Spider-Man, Mysterio's Menace. Let's start with the first one and review Spider-Man 2, The Sinister Six for Game Boy Color. The game starts out with a cutscene showing the Sinister Six trying to kidnap Peter Parker, but he isn't home, so they take Aunt May. It's nice to see Mary Jane catch a break, she's always the one getting kidnapped. Once we get to the title screen, it's pretty forgettable. They do have a password system, which is an improvement from the last portable game we saw. Gameplay has evolved as well. This is a Game Boy Color, so we have, well, color. Spider-Man also doesn't control like a blind man with two broken legs, so that's nice. The controls are still not perfect. You move really fast, making precise jumps hard to pull off. The opening level starts with you at the pier. The main enemies are clowns and the other usual suspects you'd normally see at an amusement park. I'll be honest though, I attack this clown first. This is probably just some kid making $8.50 an hour being attacked by f***ing Spider-Man. He already doesn't get paid enough for this, and now he has to defend himself against an Avenger? The levels are decently long and do have checkpoints. Speaking of checkpoints, this game is very forgiving. You start with three lives and if you lose all of those, you can continue at the start of the stage with three more. The levels are usually split up into three stages. Each stage has their own objective as shown by the headline of the Daily Bugle. But the last stage of the level always ends with a boss fight. You're fighting the classic Sinister Six. Mysterio, Sandman, Scorpion, Vulture, Kraven, Gorilla. No, no, you can't fight me. You're in a cage and Doc Ock. Most of these guys are pretty easy. They have one simple pattern and once you figure it out, it's a cakewalk. Most of the levels are pretty forgettable, nothing really interesting about them. I will give them credit though, they have a huge variety in enemy types. Every level has a new enemy type. They play mostly the same, but it's still nice to have some visual variety. I will say this game has one of the best features in any Spider-Man game I've played so far. If you stand still for a few seconds, his spider sense will go off and point you in the right direction. This is an amazing feature. The levels get pretty big and sometimes they're there's backtracking required, so this keeps things nice and simple. It stops you from having to play Spider-Man into the catacombs. While this game wasn't amazing, it does a lot of things right. And because this is a portable game, it's not really supposed to be played through in one go sitting in a computer chair. If you're going on a road trip and want to play Spider-Man to keep you distracted, then oh my god, what are you thinking? Watch the road! But if you're a passenger on that road trip, this is a game I would recommend to play. I'm gonna give it 6 Peter Parkers out of 10. You might have noticed that the last game was called Spider-Man 2 The Sinister Six, but what is that a sequel to? Well, it's actually a sequel to this game right here, but obviously that makes no sense. Actually, it does. It turns out that this game had a release on the Game Boy Color as well. So that makes it a sequel to the Spider-Man 2000 game, but this next game we're going to play, Spider-Man Enter Electro, is also a sequel to the Spider-Man 2000 game. So that means in this video, we're reviewing two sequels to the Spider-Man 2000 game. Yeah, that's not confusing. On a scale of 1 to me and my parents' eyes, this is a huge disappointment. This is not the worst game I've ever played, it's not even the worst game in the show so far, but it sure is a fall from grace. The game is so similar to the first one, it's hard to tell that it's even a different game. I even switched the footage after the first sentence to the first game, and I bet you couldn't even tell. The first game was good, but not good enough to make virtually no improvements. In fact, they made a lot more mistakes. I don't even know how that's possible. Forget Electro, the camera in this game is the main boss battle. It doesn't just blow my mind, it blows my whole damn head off. How did they mess this up? The first one did so many things well, and that's why I'm so disappointed in this one. It was a leap forward for the character. Everything was new and innovative. This one's just the same thing for another $60. 
If you liked the first game, there is fun to be had here, but this just feels like a cash grab. It was released only one year later, and by this time, the PlayStation 2 was already here. Games like Grand Theft Auto 3 and Halo were out, so there's not really any excuse for this. There really isn't a lot to say about it that I didn't already cover in the first game. This time around, there are some levels that you can walk on the street, so that's pretty cool. Also, it has a lot of weird innuendos. First off, the game is called Enter Electro. And just listen to this clip without seeing the gameplay. You know, I've never really suspended a man like this before. Yet. Shocker! Uh, nice to see you too. Ooh, you like that, huh? Well, hold still, cause you're gonna love this. Well, there goes my chance at getting a sponsor. With this game, I really said everything I had to say about it in the last video. The game is good, but with nothing innovative about it, I'm gonna only give it a 6 out of 10 shockers. We now have another Game Boy game, except this time it's for the Game Boy Advance. This is Spider-Man Mysterio's Menace. It's important to remember that both this and Sinister Six came out in 2001. Right away we can see that there's a lot more detail than the Sinister Six. I really didn't like the controls of this game at first, but by the end they really grew on me. It's super fast paced, but a lot of fun. Swinging on your web especially feels great. Story's pretty basic. There's reports of an attack at three different places, and Spider-Man has to investigate them all to find out what's really going on. Going back to gameplay, it's pretty fun. Nothing deeper engaging, but what can you really expect from a handheld system? Alright, well, what can you expect from a handheld system in 2001? They do have this annoying thing where if you get punched when you're by a ledge, you go absolutely flying off it. It has led to so many deaths and so many annoyances because sometimes there's just not much you can do to counter it. Enemies have even more variety than last time and it's really fun. Sometimes you're fighting normal goons and sometimes you're fighting skeletons. Also, the clowns are back, but this time, I'm gonna say it's a safe bet that they're the bad guys. For boss battles, we have Tombstone. Rhino, Electro, Big Wheel. Big Wheel?! For those of you who don't know, Big Wheel is Spider-Man's greatest foe. More so than the Green Goblin or even his own virginity. Big Wheel is a... man... in a big wheel. Amazing. Put a tally in the win section for Marvel. Uh, also, Mysterio's the main bad guy of this game or whatever, who cares? Most of the levels are pretty cut and dry. You either need to get to the end of the level, or do some side task like save five hostages. It's a nice break from just going left to right the entire time. I do wish they had kept that spider sense from the Sinister Six game, because I found myself getting lost in the levels a lot more than other games. There's just a lot of paths you can take, and having an arrow to guide me would have trimmed some of this game's fat. Overall, I had a good time with it. Again, if you're on a road trip and want to play a Spider-Man game, I would say bring this one along, but it's not a need to play. The real score ended up being 5 big wheels out of 10. Well that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe, and make sure to click that bell right next to the subscribe button to be notified every time I upload. Thanks again for watching, and have a great- wait, what is that? Oh. Huh. Well that's fantastic.